I would like to invite Stephanie Bond to join me here. Stephanie is the project coordinator and the GPS local project leader. Local project leader means a person in the partner organization who's actually recruiting the volunteers and supporting the volunteers. Uh, and she is with Vision Gaspé Perse Now. And Vision Gaspé Perse Now is based in Douglas Town in the Gaspé and it operates in the city of Gaspé. Stephanie will speak to us about what she finds has been learned about outreach to socially isolated seniors. Stephanie. Good morning, everyone. It's great to be back in Montreal as I was in Montreal for 10 years. Uh, arriving in on a personal note, I went straight to Chalet Barbecue. <laughs> I'm going back tonight to take home some sauce with me. <laughs> So, um, uh, some of you may know Vision Gaspé Percy now. We work in Douglas Town, which is uh, about 20 kilometers from the town of Gaspé itself. Um, in this area, we have a lot of social, socially isolated seniors. So, who are the isolated seniors was the first question I had to look at being a local project leader. Um, where were they located? So, of course, being from Gaspé, it's a small town. Um, I personally knew a lot of them myself, or I knew who to ask um, from each community where the isolated seniors were. So you'll notice that we have the town of Gaspé and Percy. Douglas Town, our office is pretty much in the middle there. It covers 50 kilometers, so that's quite a long territory to cover. Uh, living out in this area, it's a necessity to have a vehicle, like there's no public transportation, so this is something that causes a lot of people to be socially isolated, especially when you're senior. Uh, here I have a few photos of the gas bay, I'm sure some of you have visited our area. Um, it's quite a small, charming countryside. Some pictures of Percy, Percy Rock. You'll notice that I do not have any winter photos. <laughs> Socially isolated for a few reasons. Some many seniors, as were mentioned earlier, have low income. They only speak English. In fact, there are about 600 English-speaking seniors in the 50 kilometers that I mentioned earlier no transportation, they cannot drive, and they live in the isolated community. To find them, I had to ask friends, families, co-workers, people who volunteer in the community from local organizations, churches. Uh, I contacted senior clubs, and I started to create a list of people who are isolated. Here I'm creating my list. Uh, going through the top isolated people to call first. I start to phone these seniors. To my surprise, the ones that I know are the most isolated aren't really interested in having anyone visit them. There's a few reasons people are isolated sometimes. They, they choose to be sometimes question would be, your responses would be, I'm okay, I prefer not to have a visit, I like to be quiet. Maybe because they're so used to being quiet, they're scared to have somebody visit them. They'll make excuses and claim that their children are visiting, family are visiting, but being in a small community, I knew the answer was otherwise. Of course, not to be too negative, we do find some isolated seniors who are really looking forward to have volunteers visit them. These isolated seniors, of course, many of them do not even realize that they're isolated. They could have trust issues to have a stranger come visit them. They're fearful of somebody new. They are nervous to meet somebody new. They do not want to be included in any social programs in fear of losing their independence or their ability to live at home. Here we have some great connections that are starting to be made from my list. An example of one of my seniors, 
was very happy with the volunteer visiting them because he likes the volunteer to read to him because he's losing his eyesight and has failed a lot. After she reads, they have a time together where they have a friendly chat. One of my volunteers provided a quote. I'll take a moment to read it. The majority of us lead quiet, unheralded lives as we pass through this world. There will most likely be no ticket tape parades for us, no monuments created in our honor, but that does not lessen our possible impact for there are scores of people waiting for someone just like us to come along. People who will appreciate our compassion, our unique talents. Someone who will live a happier life merely because we took the time to share what we had to give. Too often we underestimate the power of a touch, a smile, a kind word, a listening ear, an honest compliment, or the smallest act of caring all of which have a potential to turn a life around. It's overwhelming to consider the continuous opportunities that are to make our love felt. This was by Leo. This is my volunteer, Kristen, who provided the previous quote. She quotes herself, I volunteered for the Friendly Visit Program. You'll notice I refer to it as Friendly Visits Program because he asked me, we have uh, another organization, the Sun Exio Menevel, which has a program for the French community, and they refer to it as the Friendly Visit Program. So that's how people there know what it is. Um, I would give to the community and I'd like to help out. Saying that the seniors I have given me so much back in return, friendship. I look forward to visits every week. Here I have a poster that I designed so we were looking for volunteers, so we had put this on Facebook. This is part of trying to find our isolated seniors and volunteers. So that pretty much sums up my presentation. I have a video to show of one of my volunteers visiting a senior. I am here today with May and Nancy, one of our volunteers. May, I would like to ask you, how has the friendly visits improved your life? improves very much because I have somebody to drop by and have a visit and a friendly game of cards. It brings happiness to your life because... Oh, yes. 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 I really love this, you this have volunteer a project. You have mobility issues as well, oh, so you yes, have a I hard have time. I have a lot of mobility issues. My left side is completely paralyzed. Is this a project that you would like to see continue in the future? I definitely would. <laughs> and at the moment, you have two volunteers coming to visit you, right? Yes. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. And Nancy, I was wondering, would you, well, what would you say would be the most rewarding factor to being a volunteer for our project? Well, just uh, seeing how you are making a difference in, in a person's life, in May's case, because it's difficult for her to get out. She looks forward to the visits uh, from us, from me. And we have a friendly kind of, somewhat, game of cards. And if she needs help with something, I help her. And we, we just have a lot of fun. Oh, yeah. Great. We're very happy to have you guys on board. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, so it's, it's a video to show. It's a very positive program. Um, in my situation, I have four to five volunteers visiting 10 seniors, uh, all of them which I asked uh, if they would like to see the program continue. Absolutely. Uh, so it's a great success in the area. So I thank you very much. Uh, hope to see you again soon. Thank you. I'm Fiona from Contactivity Center for Seniors. Just wondering how many people you managed to get on that list that you put together yourself? How many people you called? Um, I called about maybe 15 and I have 8 seniors, so about 
Uh, keeping in mind again, though, like the list was, you know, this list was quite long, and I was crossing off because I knew I, I, I'm from there, so I, I knew or asked people who were really isolated. A lot of the lists were just seniors in the area, not necessarily isolated seniors. Okay, thanks. Great. Any other questions? Thank you, Linda Shui from the Seniors Commission. Um, uh, I, I know that you, you people do a tremendous, uh, a, a, a tremendous good, and all the other groups as well. There's one thing that I, I was thinking about that, uh, like I personally, I live alone. I don't have any problem in contacting or getting out and all this sort of thing. But sometimes, and, and you can't just sort of have company all the time or talk to people all the time. And I was just wondering if uh, one of the suggestions that you make to these people is to kind of watch television. Because if you're sitting home alone and uh, the phone isn't ringing or you aren't going out or you can't go out, um, you turn on the TV and all of a sudden the whole world is in your living room. And that really does a lot to uh, dissipate any perhaps feeling of alone or uh, uh, w w no contact or something. It, 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 do you ever mention TV as a friend to these isolated people? I, I think in reality the majority of them are watching TV. Oh. Um, uh, that's probably one of the main things they have to do. Oh, good. Uh, another thing that we're starting to encourage is for seniors to get on Facebook or social media. So at the moment, we do have a uh, program where we're having computer courses for seniors. Again, the ones that are coming out to the computer courses are not the fully isolated ones. No. But you know what? In a, God forbid, in a few years, they could be. So they'll have a computer or a laptop that they can use. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions? <laughs> Just a quick question. Um, you were able to glean from your um, list those that you thought were isolated. In Montreal it's a little bit more difficult because we don't know. Do you have any thoughts on how uh, people in Montreal could uh, find out where the isolated are and approach them? Again, targeting uh, community groups. I, I think every, even though Montreal is big, every part of Montreal has that local church or uh, club where somebody could go there and speak to the key person or volunteer and they would give an idea of who's around in the neighborhood, right? I think that would be one thing that could be done in Montreal. But it, it, it is, of course, a lot harder to do. Any other questions? Just uh, one quick question. Uh, based on what you were seeing, you know, the different things that affect isolation, mm -hmm. do you think that poverty is probably the biggest one, or is uh, what in your opinion would be the biggest one? Uh, low income would be probably the biggest one in in. Uh, in the area, um, a lot of uh, seniors are on a fixed income, for sure. Um, again, uh, just back to the gas fee area, perhaps they work a job all their life. It wasn't a high salary, so they don't have a big pension and so forth. So they, they have to stay at home and keep their outings limited. Any other questions? Are your volunteers seniors? Most of them are, except for the Kristen that I showed. She's in her 40s. But yes, they're all, all my volunteers are seniors and uh, retired or not working. Which would be great because they benefit as well. Exactly. They're looking for something to do to help the community. You're finished. <laughs> Thank you. Um, 
Do uh, you find that there's an increased need now that the word has gone out? Are you finding, are people coming from the community and saying, oh, there's Mr. Smith, there's Mr. Walker over there, has anybody visited him? Is there an ongoing need or request? In the small community, people do talk, so this, this did happen. Of course, it's not, um, we're not talking hundreds, it would be one senior, two seniors popping up every couple of months. Mm -hmm. But for sure, the list has changed. Okay. I wanted to ask, you had alluded to the fact that uh, the transportation and of course the limited amount, and when they're seeking medical assistance or in need of medical help, do you partner with the C there? Do you partner with a, a health facility yes. to identify? Uh, we have a service there called um, Transport Adapte, so it's a taxi service for seniors at a set rate uh, in the 50 kilometers, for example, it would be maybe six or seven bucks pick them up at the door, take them to an appointment, and return home. So it's an option for them, for sure. Any other questions? I'm just wondering for the people that get the adapted transport organized, do they, that takes a long time here in the city to get done. Is that something that takes four or five months there, or it's very quick? Pretty much 24 hours in advance. Wow. Wow. Any other questions? We're doing well time-wise, so if you do have if you do have a question, it's a good time to ask it. And I'd just like to interject about transport while we're talking about that. This is something that we came to realize was uh, we really underestimated the. Um, the, the need for support mm -hmm. for transportation in the project. If we did it again, we would do that part differently, that's for sure. Other, other questions? <laughs> Just a response to the concern about, uh, about transport. In, in the Shaggy Valley where I live, there's um, an organization called Communic Action, which has, uh, for a period of three or four years, uh, received an increasing quite a decent grant. Uh, they have about 90 volunteer drivers, mostly seniors like myself, uh, who take about 110 uh, clients to groceries, medical appointments, uh, that sort of thing. And um, and the, the uh, budget covers their mileage. So that's a really nice program in our neighborhood. It could be replicated elsewhere, but there has to be a funding source. Yes, yeah, just to pick up on that point, I have one volunteer, for example, who travels 25 kilometers to do her visit. It's, you know, it's a 15 minute, 20 minute drive. I can add to that, uh, Kelly and I did a visit to uh, North Shore as one of our site visits and we uh, met a volunteer who had driven about 100 kilometers to visit one of the seniors. It was kind of amazing. Any other questions? Sit down. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting hungry again. <laughs> Thank you very much, guys.